Hello, this is Serene from Exam Help Lab. Today I'll be solving Cambridge International ES and E Level Chemistry Paper 2, reading to February March 2022. Question number one, figure 1 1.1 shows how first ionization energies vary across pair 2. Part A, construct an equation to represent the first ionization energy of oxygen, include state symbols. So ionization energy is about an electron loss, so oxygen, which is originally in gaseous state. So we are supposed to write oxygen, which is originally in gaseous state. It loses an electron and become an ion. That is your um, equation with state symbols. Part B1, uh, state and explain the general trend in first ionization energies across period two. So the property of elements that varies across period two is the number of electrons or number of protons uh, which are increasing uh, across a period. So as they increase the nuclear attraction for valent electrons, those which are in the outermost shell, uh, that increases, which causes increase in ionization energy across the period. Uh, although the effect of shielding remains constant throughout, which only increases when the number of shells increase. So we shall write that all right so let's move on to part two explain why ionization energy a in figure 1.1 does not follow the general trend in first ionization energies across period two so although the ionization energy increases across a period uh, it is not the case especially with elements which are in group six uh, where elements have a paired electron in its outermost shell which is a p orbital electron so a paired electron means that less external energy is required to remove an electron from its outermost shell so we can write that due to spin pair repulsion in p orbital which is stronger than increased nuclear charge the ionization energy on this bar chart for element a is not following the general trend What do they mean by increased nuclear charge? So as you move uh, towards the right side of period, of any period, in fact, the nuclear charge increases because the number of protons increase. Part C, element E is in period three of the periodic table. The first eight ionization energy values of E are shown in table 1.1. So these are the first eight ionization energies of the electron they're talking about that is E which is in period 3 uh, you need to use the full electronic configuration of E and explain your answer as well okay so if you see there is a huge difference uh, between third and the fourth ionization energies of about 8,000 kilojoules per mole whereas the other differences that you see like between first and second second and third 4th and 5th, 5th and 6th, 6th and 7th, and 7th and 8th. Uh, the difference is about uh, just 8,000 kilojoules per mole, uh, which means that this element has three valence electrons because the huge jump in ionization energies is between the third and the fourth ionization energy. And ionization energy is all about energy required to remove an electron. So the first three ionization energies a set of this and the other five ionization energies they are a different set so the jump the huge jump that we're talking about over here is between the third and the fourth ionization energy so we can deduce that this element has three valence electrons hence it is going to be in group three and it is already mentioned that it is uh, in pair three as well so pair three and group three uh, that makes up an aluminium so well, which has a configuration of uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1 and the explanation is going to be that
So whenever you see the huge jump in ionization energies, that indicates that there is a change in the shell. Now you're moving towards an inner shell. All right, let's move on to the next question. Question number two. Some oxides of elements in period three are shown. Our part A, sodium reacts with oxygen to form sodium oxide. Sodium is the reducing agent in this reaction. Part number one, define reducing agent. So a reducing agent is a species that donates electrons. A reducing agent brings reduction to one uh, other species and oxidizes itself. Part two, write an equation for the reaction of sodium oxide with water. So sodium oxide or metal oxide plus water that results in sodium hydroxide. That's a strong base and you need to balance your equation as well. All right. Part B, aluminum oxide is an amphoteric oxide found in bauxite. Part 1 state what is meant by amphoteric. So amphoteric oxide, it reacts with both acids and bases. You must know that there exists four kinds of oxides. There is a metallic oxide, which uh, is a basic oxide. There is a non-metallic oxide that is usually a basic, that is usually an acidic oxide. Uh, and then there is neutral oxide as well as amphoteric oxides. Neutral oxides, they react with neither. And uh, amphoteric oxides, they have the properties of both of an acid and an alkali. Part two. Okay, let's complete this. It reacts with both acids and bases. Part two, aluminum oxide is purified from bauxite in several steps. The first step involves heating aluminum oxide with an excess of sodium hydroxide that is in aqueous state. A colorless solution forms. So a colorless solution forms and it is heating aluminum oxide with excess of sodium hydroxide, which is an aqueous state. Uh, write an equation for this reaction. So aluminum oxide, it is reacting with excess of sodium hydroxide this will result in forming sodium aluminate which has a formula of Na OH4 Na carries a charge of plus uh, this anion that has a formula of AlOH4 carries a charge of negative and Na is plus so this will form Na AlOH4 which is this one now you need to balance your equation as well. So there will be two moles of NaOH and two moles of sodium aluminate. Part three, aluminum oxide is used as a catalyst in the dehydration of alcohols. State the effect of using aluminum oxide as a catalyst in the dehydration of alcohols. Use the Boltzmann uh, distribution in figure 2.1 to help explain your answer. So aluminum oxide is being used as a catalyst in this reaction of, that is dehydration of alcohols, which is alcohols. Dehydration of alcohols basically means you remove H and OH from it. So that will be an alkene plus H2O. All right. So you need to explain how uh, Al2O3 is going to be used in the dehydration of alcohols. So a catalyst is only responsible for providing a lower activation energy. It provides an alternative pathway to a reaction where the uh, activation energy is lowered. Uh, so now the more number of molecules will have energy that is greater than activation energy for the reaction and the frequency of the effective collisions will increase. So you must write that And since this question is of three marks, a two will go to your explanation and the other mark uh, is for your graph. So you need to show that. And since I already told you that Catalyst is only responsible for providing a lower activation energy, it does nothing to the graph except that the activation energy will be moved towards the left. That is lowering your activation energy. So the new activation energy will be towards the left 
while your older activation energy was this one so this is ea and this is ea after the catalyzation now this shading will explain my uh, reasoning that I gave here that more number of molecules will have energy greater than activation energy this is your activation energy after it has been catalyzed so more number of molecules will have energy that is greater than the activation energy part C P4O6 that is phosphoric oxide is a white solid that has a melting point of 24 degrees Celsius solid phosphoric oxide reacts with water to form phosphoric acid part one deduce the type of structure and bonding shown by phosphoric oxide explain your answer so since this structure has a melting point that is as low as 24 degrees celsius we can say that it must have a simple molecular structure And also because it reacts with water and hydrolyzes to an acidic solution that is phosphoric oxide. It reacts with water, which means it hydrolyzes with water. It must have a covalent bonding. So Part to determine the oxidation number of phosphorus in phosphoric acid. The overall oxidation state of this phosphoric acid is zero. So we can write that since hydrogen has plus one and has three molecules, uh, has three atoms in here, so three into plus one is going to be three. We're going to add the oxidation states. Phosphorus, since that is unknown, so we'll assume it as X and it only has got one atom. So one into X plus three uh, atoms of oxygen multiplied by the oxidation state of oxygen which is always negative two so negative two is equals to the combined oxidation state of the entire molecule that is h3po3 and that is zero so when we rearrange this formula your value for x is going to be positive three so positive three is the oxidation state of phosphorus in phosphoric acid part three when phosphoric oxide is heated with oxygen it forms P4O10 where uh, phosphorus basically changes its oxidation state. Phosphorus over here has an oxidation state of plus 3 and over here it has an oxidation state of plus 5. So in this entire in this entire reaction it is only going to be changing its oxidation state. It is being oxidized since the in, since there is increase in oxidation number the enthalpy change of formation of uh, p4o10 is negative 3012 kilojoules per mole calculate the enthalpy change of formation of p4o6 so for this you need to write this equation p4o6 plus oxygen that is already given on the top uh, p4o10 where oxygen has two moles now the enthalpy change and this enthalpy of for this reaction is negative 1372 so you need to write that here now it gives you the the following data will help you in finding the answer to this question the enthalpy change of formation of p4o10 is negative 3012 so the formation of this means that you need to have phosphorus what is formation formation is from its elements from its elements in its standard states so phosphorus there are going to be four moles of phosphorus plus 10 moles of oxygen so that is 502 this is forming p4o10 and this is enthalpy change of formation and since there is only going to be forming one mole of p4o10 we are going to only write negative 3012 multiplied by one if there were two moles of P4O10 forming, then we would have written negative 3012 multiplied by 2. Now, the next formation that is required is of this, P4O6, from its elements and its standard states. And since there is formation of only one mole of P4O6, we are going to assume that this is only x, but not anything multiplying with x. Alright, so when you write this, this is your direct root to forming P4O10. And this is your indirect route to forming P4O10. So your equation will be negative 3012 is equals to x plus negative 1372. When you rearrange your equation, your value for x is going to be negative 1640 kilojoules per mole. 
mind that the enthalpies which will be given in the question over here in the form of enthalpy change of formation or hydration or anything like that they're only for one mole because they say per mole this means that this energy is only when one mole of something forms or one mole of something is hydrolyzed or one mole of something is neutralized so if there are two moles of P4O10 forming P4O10, if there are two moles of P4O10 being hydrolyzed or being neutralized, then you must multiply this value with the number of moles that is over here. Part 4, write an equation for the reaction of P4O10 with water. So phosphoric oxide, when it reacts with water, it forms an acid, and that is phosphoric acid you need to balance your equation so there are going to be uh, six moles of h2o and four moles of phosphoric acid part d sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide are found in the atmosphere the oxidation state of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide in the atmosphere is catalyzed by nitrogen dioxide the first step of the catalytic oxidation is shown in equation 1, that is a reaction between sulfur dioxide and no, uh, nitrogen dioxide. It forms sulfur trioxide where sulfur is being oxidized because it has plus 4 state and plus 6 state over here, while nitrogen is going to be reduced because N has an oxidation state of plus 4 here and has an oxidation state of plus 2 here. So that is being reduced. Uh, construct an equation to show how nitrogen dioxide is going to be regenerated in the catalytic oxidation of sulfur dioxide. So since in this reaction nitrogen dioxide is being used, nitrogen dioxide is being used as a catalyst. So a catalyst is always regenerated after the reaction takes place. So nitrogen dioxide will be reforming after this NO reacts with oxygen and this forms nitrogen dioxide the regeneration uh, of the catalyst and you need to balance your equation so half of oxygen mole. part 2 nitrogen dioxide can also react with unburned hydrocarbons to form photochemical smog state the product of this reaction that contributes to photochemical uh, smog so that is your peroxyacetyl nitrate this is some theory part that you need to know before you come to give your uh, exam. So that's peroxyacetyl nitrate. Part 3, figure 2.2 shows how the temperature of the atmosphere varies with height from the ground. So this is your graph where the height is increasing on the y-axis and temperature is increasing as you move along the x-axis. Uh, the equilibrium reaction in equation 1 has this energy change that is negative 168 kilojoules per mole suggest how the position of this equilibrium differs at a height of 20 kilometers compared with a height of 50 kilometers from the ground explain your answer so a height of 20 kilometers means that you have a temperature of about uh, negative 52 or something Whereas if you go to a height of 50 kilometer, that will have a temperature of about zero degree Celsius, maybe. So moving from uh, 50 kilometers to 20 kilometers, it can be seen from the graph that the temperature is going to be lowered. And when the temperature is lowered, the reaction equation, the reaction equilibrium shifts to the side that raises the temperature. It always works with, in the opposite manner. So your, since your forward reaction is exothermic over here, as it can be seen with the help of the sign, this negative shows that your forward reaction is exothermic. The forward reaction is going to be favored where the temperature of the surroundings is going to increase and the equilibrium will be shifting to the right. So we can write that. Question number three, the hydrogen halides, HCl, HBr, and HI are all colorless gases at room temperature. Part A, the hydrogen halides can be formed by reacting the halogens with hydrogen. 
describe and explain the relative reactivity of the halogens down the group when they react with hydrogen to form hydrogen chloride, hydrogen bromide, and hydrogen iodide. So reactions down group 7 are less rigorous due to decreased electronegativity because electronegativity decreases as you move down group 7. And since the atomic size increases as we move down the group, the attraction of electrons is less. Hence, there is going to be a lower probability of electron addition to the ion, to the halide ion. Part B, HCl is a product of several different reactions. Some of these are shown in figure 3.1. So the silicon chloride, it reacts when it reacts with water that forms HCl. And when NaCl reacts with concentrated H2SO4, that also forms HCl. Part 1, write an equation for reaction 1. So reaction 1 is having silicon chloride reacting with water. Uh, you will have this... Uh, in your chemistry textbook that when uh, pair three elements pair three chlorides when they are reacting with water you will have the list of all the reactions so this is one from there SiCl4 reacting with H2O this forms HCl for sure and silicon dioxide and when you balance your equation this becomes 4 HCl and 2 H2O Part 2. In reaction 2, NaCl reacts with concentrated H2SO4 to form HCl and NaHSO4. When NaBr reacts with concentrated H2SO4, the products include bromine and sulfur dioxide. Identify the type of reactions that occur in each case by completing Table 3.1. Explain the differences in these reactions. So, when NaCl reacts with h 2 let me write it over here. When NaCl reacts with H2SO4, it forms HCl plus NaHSO4, where HCl is a stronger oxidizing agent than H2SO4. What H2SO4 does to NaCl, it oxidizes Cl to HCl, but the product that forms, which is HCl, is a stronger one than H2SO4. It possesses stronger oxidizing power than H2SO4 does. So the reaction stops right here and it's an acid base reaction so we can write over here that it's an acid base reaction now let me write for the nabr nabr when it reacts with h2so4 it does form hbr just like it did with nacl it formed hcl it forms hbr over here plus nahso4 However, and this is also an acid-base reaction, so an acid-base reaction does take place. However, the reaction does not stop here because HBr, that is the product forming here, further will be oxidized into Br2 plus SO2. And this is a redox reaction because Br is oxidized uh, from negative 1 to zero over here and sulfur is being oxidized from plus six to plus four here that is why it is an uh, that is why it is called a redox reaction and the explanation is that h2so4 why the reaction is a uh, a little different from the reaction that is on the top which is with NaCl this reaction will stop right here however this will not stop right here HBr since it possesses less oxidizing power than H2SO4 H2SO4 will be further uh, will be it will be further oxidizing HBr into its uh, Br2 and SO2 Part C, when heated with a Bunsen burner, HCl does not decompose, whereas HI forms hydrogen and iodine. Explains the difference in the effect of heating on HCl and HI. That is definitely because HCl has a stronger covalent bond than HI. The bond energy is clearly more 
uh, is higher in HCL than it is in HI. So HCL. Part D, the hydrogen halides dissolve in water to form strong Bronsted Lowry acids. Uh, the concentration of a strong acid can be determined by titration. Part 1 states what is meant by bro strong Bronsted Lowry acid. So, acid, first of all, an acid is a species that. And since it says a strong one, a strong one fully dissociates into water. Part 2 on figure 3.2 sketch the pH titration curves produced when 0.1 mole per decimeter cube of sodium hydroxide is added to 25 centimeter cube of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube of HBr, which is an axis. Uh, and then there is the same concentration of ammonia, which is a weaker base than NaOH, it, that is also added to the same amount of HBr, which is again an axis. So these are the graphs given to you. So since HBr is a strong acid, you can write that over here, HBr is an acid, which is a strong one. The initial pH for both the graphs, because the NaOH and the NH3 are going to be added to HBr, so the initial HBr, the initial pH for both these graphs, for both these um, solutions is going to be a lot lower than 4 or 2 because HBr is a strong acid. So let's say we have a pH of uh, a 1 or 2, so as low as 1. So we're going to mark it over here. The initial pH are going to be 1. These are the pH of uh, HBr because NaOH and NH3 are going to be added to excess amount of HBr. As soon as NaOH is uh, added to this uh, to HBr, the pH starts to increase, and NaOH is a stronger base. Your final pH will be a lot higher, uh, maybe like 13 with NaOH. So your final is going to be somewhere here, 13. Uh, if compared with NaOH, NH3, the final pH for NH3 will be relatively lower, let's say like 9 or 10, but uh, above 7 for sure. So somewhere here, it's going to be near 9 or 10. Uh, with a vertical section at 25 centimeter of cube of NaOH and NH3 both because that's when the reaction starts and the mole ratio with both these reactions where NaOH reacts with HBr and NH3 reacts with HBr the mole ratio of HBr and NaOH and the mole ratio of HBr to NH3 is 1 is to 1 so the same uh, volume of NaOH will be required and NH3 will be required to uh, initiate the reaction and that's when the reaction starts with both and with both NaOH and NH3 so this is the vertical section this is where the reaction start this is when the reaction starts so your graph is going to look somewhat like this NaOH is a much stronger base than NH3, so its final pH is going to be a lot higher than the final pH over here. Your initial pH are going to be the same because HBr is a strong acid and HBr is being used, the same reagent is being used for in both the reactions. And there's going to be a vertical section at both the graphs, which is at 25 centimeter cube of both NaOH and NH3 because of the mole ratio that is in the equation, NaOH reacting with HBr, where NaOH and HBr will both have one mole, one mole reacting, and NH3 plus HBr will also have one mole of NH3 and one mole of HBr. So the same amount of NH3 will be required and the same amount of NaOH will be required to completely neutralize HBr. Part E, HBr reacts with propene to form two bromoalkanes. Uh, part 1, complete the diagram to show the mechanism of the reaction of HBr and propene to form the major organic products. So major is the word. 
include charges, dipoles, lone pairs of electrons, and curly arrows as appropriate. Draw the structures of the intermediate and the major organic products. So two structures will be here. Now the HBr, this HBr has a is going to have a partial positive charge on H and partial negative charge on Br, where this bond breaks with Br with Br getting the electron. And this double bond over here is electron dense, which is going to attract this H over here. The next structure is going to have double bond breaks and two new sigma bonds are made. So first of all, this electron dense carbon to carbon double bond attracts this partial positively charged hydrogen and the next structure is going to have the H being bonded to either this carbon atom or this carbon atom. Now since the question is asking you for the major organic product, a major organic product means that you're going to have one that is relatively more stable. If you had attached Br to this one, this would be then forming a primary carbocation because two hydrogen atoms and one Br. If you had attached Br over here, it will be forming a secondary carbocation with only one hydrogen attached to it and two alkyl groups. Secondary carbocations are relatively more stable than primary ones, so we are going to assume that our major organic product will have Br being attached here and our hydrogen that was partial positively charged, it will be attached here. For the intermediate product, we are going to remove the dash over here, we are going to remove the bond over here and this will be having a single positive charge that will be attracting Br that has an electron pair and a negative charge so this will be attracted towards the positively charged carbon atom. Now your next product is going to be C having an H over here and a Br this forms a secondary carbocation because of only one hydrogen and two alkyl groups. Part 2 explain why the two bromoalkanes are not produced in equal amounts by this reaction. So like I mentioned earlier, bromine has a chance of attaching to either this carbon atom or this carbon atom, but since the question had stated the major organic product, that means only the secondary carbocation will be forming uh, in a larger percentage. I did not mean that uh, the one that ha that would have the primary carbocation would not form, that will also form, but the percentage will be a lot lower than that of organic, this major organic product. So the reasoning is that because the secondary carbocation is more stable due to greater positive inductive effect of the two alkyl groups that attach to this carbon atom. There is an alkyl group over here and an alkyl group over here. Whereas if the if we talk about the minor organic product, which would have an alkyl group here, and if both hydrogens here and the Br had attached to the third carbon atom, this Br atom, which is attached to this carbon atom, will only have one alkyl group. So there is less positive inductive effect on this carbon atom. As far as this structure is concerned, which is the major organic product, this carbon atom has alkyl groups on both sides on both left and the right side so there is more pro pro there, so there is more positive inductive effect which makes this structure more stable as compared to this one so the reasoning to this is The reaction of CH3, CH2, CH2Br and sodium hydroxide is different depending on whether water or ethanol is used as a solvent. Complete table 3.2 to determine to identify the organic and inorganic products of the reaction of this of these two substances in each solvent. So when NaOH is in the aqueous form, when it is in the aqueous form this bromide this bromide will be replaced by this OH so the organic product that forms will be CH3 CH2 CH2 OH and the inorganic product will be this Na 
will be bonding with this BR. So the inorganic product will be NABR. This is your propanol. Now, when the NaOH is in the ethanolic state, means NaOH plus ethanol, and then plus plus your CH3, CH2, CHBr, that will be resulting in formation of propene. So propene, that is your organic product. And the inorganic products are going to be two, that is NaBr plus water. This is the equation for this reaction. Question number four, compounds J and K are found in plant oils. Part A, complete table 4.1 to state what you would observe when J reacts with the reagents listed. So 2,4-DNPH, that is 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, recognizes both aldehydes and ketone groups, uh, and it gives orange precipitate for a positive reaction. Since J has got uh, both the groups, that is the ketone group, and the aldehyde groups, there will be orange precipitate forming. All right. Now, Tollens reagent is only able to give silver precipitate when aldehyde group is present in a structure, which it does in the case of J, because J has got the aldehyde group over here, so this Tollens reagent would give silver PBD with the structure J. Now, sodium metal uh, would either react with alcohol group or an acid group or both. Since J has the alcohol group, so an effervescence is seen due to the hydrogen gas that is being produced. So effervescence. Part 2, J has two optical isomers. Draw the three-dimensional structures of the two optical isomers of J. So optical isomer means one carbon that is attached to four different group of atoms. So we're going to have C. H3. Part B, K is used to make the addition polymer perspex. A synthesis of perspex is shown in figure 4.2. Part 1, identify L, state the conditions required for reaction 1. So the acid group over here to ester group over here, that is C double O, which means that L must be an alcohol, the removal of OH, and the addition of OCH3. The addition of OCH3 has only got an addition of one carbon atom. That means that L must be L is already an alcohol and L must be methanol because methanol has only one carbon atom. All right, carboxylic acid to ester group. This means that addition of alcohol to acid that forms an ester group. Uh, now, which alcohol? Since the addition of OCH3 from the alcohol group contains only one carbon atom, that must mean that must mean that L is a methanol. Now, the conditions are going to be all the conditions for the esterification, like presence of an acidic catalyst like H2SO4 plus heat under reflux. Part 2, draw one repeat unit of the addition polymer for specs. So, addition polymer, that means that your double bond breaks and two new sigma bonds are formed. So, this double bond breaks two hydrogens on the left of carbon and the ester group COOCH3 and CH3. The double bond in the middle breaks and two new sigma bonds are formed with bracket over here in N, which means the number of the repeat units. Uh, bar 3 use information from table 4.2 to suggest how the infrared spectra of M and the perspex would differ. Explain your answer. So the only difference in both structures of M and the per perspex, that is the addition polymer perspex, uh, would be the double bond, which is missing in the structure of perspex. This double bond had broken into a single bond, 
uh, so the infrared spectra of M would not have a peak at if you see over here that C double bond C would have an absorption peak in the range of 1500 to 1680 now since M is now since the structure of perspex is missing the double bond the you can write that all right because this is missing C double C and the structure of M has a double bond which perspex doesn't all right let's move on to the next and the last part part 4 k can be made from propanone in the three step synthesis shown in figure 4.3 complete table 4.3 to identify the reagents used and the type of reaction in each step so step one involves removal of ketone group and the addition of an h with this o and this o the same and an addition of a nitrile group so in addition of hydrogen and addition of a nitrile group this means that the reagent that is being used and this you could say that this is an ad addition reaction so this is the type of this reaction and the addition is of h and cn so the reagent must be hcn then now step two involves nitrile group being changed to carboxylic acid group and nothing else is being changed so nitrile to carboxylic acid this is hydrolysis reaction plus h2so4 now step three this has an acid group and it is reacting with aluminum oxide this oh is being removed from the group and one of the h from these two uh, methyl groups are also being removed so this is uh, you could say that this is a dehydration process where h2o molecule is being removed so this was removed so that was the end of the paper thank you for watching